You're listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala, your source for the uncensored truth regarding the human, extraterrestrial, global, and political agenda. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel. And now, here's Dr. Michael Sala. Distraction. Yeah. You know, no matter what you say about that situation, we're going to trigger somebody. But, you know, there's also Black League ships here. Yes. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. Can you elaborate on that, Alex? For who, 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 what is the Black League? Sh who are the Black League sh uh, ships? Well, some of them were called dragonflies, or what we would call a dragonfly. And um, now I'm not referring to a uh, an X-wing from Star Wars, but have you seen the new Dune movie? The new version of Dune? Not yet. Okay. Um, they have something that's very, very similar to a Black League dragonfly on the, on the, uh, on the planet with the spice. It's very, very similar. In fact, I was blown away to see it. Our solar system was, because of all the planets and asteroids, was a very good place to hide um, after attacking huge Orion convoys. And many of us never made it out of this solar system. And we planted our ships in specific areas. Now, here in the US, the Southwest was idealistic for that because of the weather. Um, and all of the caves that existed. And there are places from Palm Springs, all the way to, to the Texas border, where there are craft waiting to be turned on. And, you know, they hold crews of three, four, five. That's max. And um, they're weaponized craft. They're weaponized. That's what they were used for. So, you know, And there are people who are hearing my voice who have known me for years, who know exactly what I'm talking about, because um, we have we know of places that we cannot access yet, and we know what's what's hidden there, but we just can't access it yet because the time wasn't appropriate. So many star seeds then are kind of freedom fighters from this black league that uh, oh yeah have oh yeah behind tech oh yeah you know you're you're very clear about right and wrong and it's it's very easy to pick a side and you know. you always champion the underdog i don't know what it is but we just do we just know and that's exactly where we're going to go we're going to champion the underdog and we've always done that you know and there you know there are trillions of star seeds all over the galaxy and in other galaxies i mean if we have just 200 million on this planet Imagine what's out there that's still rooting for us in other worlds or other places, or they're part of the crews of the ships that are here now, the fleets. You know, they've done this work in other lifetimes. And, you know, that's the contrast. You know, I mean, that, that's how we evolved 
in 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 amazing ways is is because of the contrast. We're confronted with the contrast, and we make choices. We make decisions, you know. And Chief Chief Joseph of the Nez Pierce, you know, had a, a, an amazing quote. You know, wisdom comes from experience, and experience comes from poor judgment. Yeah. You know, we've all been there in this life and in others, you know, and then, and, and generally the poor judgments are because we lack information, but we're forced into a situation where we have to make a decision. And it doesn't always turn out the way we think, you know. Well, one of the things that I think excites people the most is the prospect that a lot of these advanced technologies that were left over or were used in these ancient civilizations and you know, carried over, whether it's in the arcs, whether it's the ETs, whether it's uh, through uh, Space Command and its collaboration with uh, different ET groups or other nations, is that a lot of this advanced tech is, is going to be released. And I know a lot of the most advanced technology has been suppressed for well over 100 years now, going all the way back to Tesla. So is now the time when all of a sudden we're going to have a flood of these advanced technologies suddenly being released? Uh, and, and kind of like, you know, is it going to be like all of a sudden we're given these advanced technologies by the ETs working through organizations like Space Command or working with private companies like uh, SpaceX and Starlink, or will it be just through um, inventors all of a sudden, you know, reinventing the wheel that, you know, the pressure's off that they can file patents with the patent and trademark office and, and it's not going to be just locked away under some secrecy order, you know, gathering dust, but it's like, okay, the patent will be granted and now they can go and build an anti-gravity craft or build a, a, a hollow... A, um, a holographic uh, healing device or something like along those lines? Well, I think all the patents are already there and it's just a matter of releasing them and uh, into uh, the society. And all most of these technologies are already in use in space, in the different space programs. Um, it's not something new, but something that will be shared more widely when it will be safe to share them that's what i'd say yeah i i uh, as far as new technologies and inventors you know the system the patent system which has been controlled by the crown of england using ses for quite some time which had control of the patent office by the way uh you know people who have come up with all these things it didn't end well for them so I don't know that there's a lot of trust in that structure and system the way it is still, um, you know, because your your technology, your ideas would be stolen, and then they would uh, they would blacklist it, and they you know persecute the inventor to make sure they never talked about it, or they were just eliminated. And you know, there's a huge history of this shift. Now, as far as it coming all at once, no, I think it's going to be a very systematic rollout. I mean, just using Nikola Tesla's technology of Earth's resonant field for energy, for electricity, that would change the entire world, just that one piece of technology. And then you bring in the med beds, oh my God, profound change. Um, in everybody's life. There's not a single person who wouldn't be touched by a med bed. Yeah. And the additional uh, opportunities for uh, long longevity and a longer life. Um, and then of course, there's the uh, extraterrestrial tech, much of what's been here, but they didn't know what it did. They didn't know how to use it. They couldn't turn it on, they couldn't operate it. So what did they do? They buried it in archives under the Smithsonian, uh, the, the, uh, the Iraqi Museum of History. You know, you didn't mention that, you know, one of the things that they did in, in Baghdad was go in there and pull out everything that was in the basement. 
because it was all extraterrestrial. Yeah. So, you know, and Saddam Hussein knew what it was. He just couldn't use it, you know, because he couldn't turn it on. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a fascinating time. It really is. It's, it's the past, present, and the future all coming together at once on this tiny little planet. And we all have front row seats for the show. Yeah, we are indeed uh, in, the, in the front row waiting for the next act to uh, begin. And it seems that uh, some ET groups are very active on Earth. And uh, Elena, you, you met an ET in Ireland who says that she was from Alpha Centauri and that she was working on some advanced technology in uh, California. We assume that was Paradise, California, that was burned down because she said the town was burned down. So, you know, why is it, or what do you know about the Alpha Centaurians? And I think you recently have, have an update on what they're doing in our solar system. So can you tell us about the Alpha Centaurians and what they're doing to help introduce some of this advanced technology to Earth? Sure, Michael. Well, there are different cultures in the Alpha Centauri systems. There are three star systems in there. And um, mostly is the Meton and the Silosi, or Silosians. And they are uh, involved with um, space programs and um, building new, new uh, space fleets and developing new technology on Earth since the 1950s. Um, and um, they they are very much like us. They look like us. It's mind blowing. You you can't tell it's uh, an ET. You can't uh, absolutely you can't. And they have they are settled in and they're living among us. They are settled in our societies, um, etc. Well, um, yes, they. This person I met was um, just visiting and. Uh, she 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 took contact with me to talk about um she didn't tell much about her life that she was coming from california and that her old little town was burnt and many of them died and they were working on developing advanced connectivity technologies it was about connectivity and this person just advised me to trust starlink systems because it was going to be the future of communications and it would use a connectivity based on quantum technology and it will be something new and i need to trust that she delivered to me this message uh they, she mentioned that they were all working on these this new advanced technology in this town that was burned so we well Michael, you, you you came with the conclusion that it had to be paradise, and I totally agree. Recently, uh, Thorhan was accompanying a, a convoy coming from the Alpha Centaurian systems, especially the planet Silo, to colonize, to settle on Mars. These uh, people from the, these new colons uh, are settling on Mars with a new, with new Earth colonies. And they are going to work together and they are going the, the earth colons are going uh, settlers are going to learn about new technology technologies from these alpha centaurians about agricultures biodomes and uh, they're going to work together and settle together this was prepared a, a month and month before of course i wasn't told because for probably safety reasons uh, there were a series of meetings on Silo and also on uh, Ganymede. I saw once uh, a month ago, there was a meeting on Ganymede in a facility of the Intergalactic Confederation between inter the, the Cedars people, the Guardians, and uh, a delegation of Martians. But the real Martians, you know, the reptilians, uh, there wasn't an insectoid there. The reptilians are... Uh, just leading and you know the martian society now they are free they they used to be called the martian resistance but now they are really empowered and they've re 
warm their planet. So they were um, discussing on Ganymede about the future of Mars. I didn't know much at that time. And now I know that it was just last week as we speak. Um, it was to prepare uh, this new redistribution of, of Mars, where the locals, the reptilians and the insectoids, and sectoids anyway, would have the, the, the primer of everything. It's their planet, and the others are just invited to, to settle there. That, that's what I um, I know about the, the input of the Alpha Centaurians uh, recently. How about you, Alex? Do you know anything about um, different ET groups living amongst uh, humanity and seeding technologies? I have met some. I have met some. Okay. Uh, can you elaborate on that or is that... Uh... <laughs> uh... Some work in government, um, some work for aerospace contractors. And, and Elena is absolutely right. You would never know unless they, they showed you. And um, I knew a woman that I became very, very close with who worked for the Franchise Tax Board in the state of California. And um, we're still friends to this day. And some of them have actually had children. They have offspring here. So they've invested everything in seeing that this, this, this process, this journey that we're all on is successful because they have seeded their own here as well. And that's all I'm going to say at this point. Well, that's great. That's corroborating uh, some of the information I've gotten from other sources. Uh, uh, Bill Tompkins, who worked in the aerospace industry, he talked about uh, these extraterrestrials being embedded in major companies like Douglas Aircraft Company, McDonnell Douglas, TRW, and so forth, and, and all helping uh, develop advanced technologies, helping the Navy uh, develop these advanced technologies. So, yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. So with uh, this quantum communication system uh, that Starlink and Elon Musk are setting up, uh, based on the information you've received, Elena, um, yeah, this this is not something to be worried about because I know people assume that the Starlink system is is going to be like um, something that's just going to beam all these harmful five G uh, EMFs uh, to us. And uh, and as far as I know, with my kind of research into this, it's, it's like Starlink is actually developing a different model. They're not using the five G system that say. Companies like Verizon and AT and T and the major telecommunications industries do, which is all based on five G and six G, that, that they are developing a quantum internet. And I, I know you both attended my webinar uh, last week, and you know, there was something called Project Odin that I haven't been able to really confirm. There's a lot of rumors about it. So you know that's that's supposed to be where SpaceX. Uh, where uh, SpaceX, Starlink are working with uh, US Space Command in setting up a kind of quantum internet system. So yeah, do either of you know anything about, about that? Well, I don't know anything about the project Odin, but I know about Odin. <laughs> Odin was a Norse god. He was the father of all god and gods. And Odin died to reborn and gain knowledge. So Odin represents um, something that is pushed to the limit that it breaks out, breaks down and nearly dies. And by the death experience, by the transformation, becomes a new being that has gained 
absolute knowledge in the process. To me, this is a metaphor for a system that is not working anymore, that dies and that switches to something new. And this something new has to do with knowledge or sharing knowledge. That's what Odin represents to me. Thank you. That's very profound. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, Alex, do you have any information on that? Uh, as a platform, it, its sole purpose is to um, elevate all consciousness. And the way it works is that it moves in between many different frequencies. And you know, the fact that it's quantum means that its ability is not just limited to third density. Its ability also opens fourth density and it can also open fifth density. It all depends on how much they decide to turn up the juice on it. So if we wanted to actually talk to the rest of the cosmos, using this type of a technology could in fact do that if we wanted genuine galactic knowledge this system would give us access to it we would never get it with the system that's in the, that's presently in existence the platforms we've been using xfinity comstore comcast uh, Verizon, any of those, those systems were never built. They were built to contain information and knowledge, not to expand it. Even the internet, the intention was to share data and information. What happened was humanity really took to it and information was going and moving and being spread so fast that they had to contain it. They had to start to shut it down because consciously we were beginning to outgrow the internet. They weren't able to contain the information. So, and it was never designed for this, the system we are currently using. The quantum system, completely different platform. It actually complements the fact that humanity's consciousness is expanding and it will allow us to expand on a consciousness level because it's built to pick up information that's just not third but fourth and fifth knowledge exactly it's it's a whole new world mm -hmm. so yeah. so sorry elena go ahead if I may say, uh, to give you an example, I I realized I realized I have this technology within me in my body. the The implant device that I have works like this. It's a quantum resonance communication. Wherever Thoran is in the galaxy, the distance doesn't matter. We can connect because there is no medium between one point to the other the two devices are um interacting by quantum something is triggered here it triggers here but there's nothing in between that can be hacked it's unhackable right. so that's something important as well it's unhackable it's so like a laser example it's, it's like a laser um you you know many of the military now use lasers for communication well you break the beam everybody knows it okay yeah and you've broken the beam. The quantum system is, is exactly just what she said. You're point A, point B, and it's only you two having the conversation. Yeah. Um, you know, to have to use true holographic technology, you have to have the quantum system in place. So you can pull it down. We would never be able to generate the elect the energy necessary to truly do something like this on a global level, you know, and, 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 you know, everybody's talking about Project Bluebeam and all that stuff, you know, that would never work if they hadn't chemtrailed the entire sky for 25 years. You know, they didn't put all that shit in the atmosphere, it never would work. 
So literally what we're seeing is like a film being bounced off our atmosphere because of all the particles that they put in it. You know, that was the intention. Mm -hmm. And well, you know, well, they, 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 can, they can take ships, fly them with a resonance right through our atmosphere and all those particles will come down to the surface and be completely harmless. So, you know, we're gonna be okay. Yeah. We're gonna be okay. Well, and that's uh, one of the things that uh, people would really love to know more about is right now, everyone's being bombarded with a new wave of kind of fear porn. The mass media is just pumping images of war and, and they're kind of like, they're dangling this prospect of a nuclear war uh, with the US. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are starting to get scared, but I, I know I've been following uh, the, the, the Patriot movement, you know, people like Juan or Seven, Michael Jaco, uh, many others saying that uh, you know, this is a, there's a giant show playing out at the moment and that in, part of the show is that we need to get to the very brink to wake up the normies. And, and that very brink is, you know, nuclear war it wakes people up. And then it's like, okay, then you can, then you can kind of like unleash or oh, the White Hats can spring into action and kind of like unleash the public uh, broadcasting system and announcing all of the stuff that's being held. I think, Alex, you've talked about that, um, you know, like packets of information that's just going to be rolled out when people have reached the, the, the right, when the critical mass has been reached. So, yeah. Can yeah, we, when they can we actually hear that. the information, well, they actually can hear it. Right now, most people would turn it off because they're not ready to hear it. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, no matter what you say about Ukraine or Russia, you're going to trigger somebody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but the bottom line is, and you know, this information's out there. Ukraine is not a separate country. It never legally defined its borders. So technically, as far as the UN is concerned, and they know this, going back to 1991, Ukraine is still an extension of Russia because they have no treaties whatsoever designating their borders, none. They never did it. Two, there are people on the ground and foreign correspondents who were saying it's the Ukrainian military and mercenaries that are blowing up and bombing the Ukrainian people and the media is spinning it saying it's the Russians. You know, um, now it's possible that in taking out some of these bases and bio, um, uh, bio structures that have been created there, you know, that some innocent civilians are being, being killed. I'm sure that's possible, but, you know, why isn't everybody asking why were there so many bio labs there you know why were there so many why were we paying for all that shit? and what was it exactly they were doing you see we can't have that conversation we can't have that conversation yet because they won't let us you know what was billions and billions of dollars going on there what were they doing you know and the adrenochrome labs that were there why don't you explain that let's have a conversation about that but we can't because of all the fear porn and the nuclear war just go back to steve greer's disclosure project what were the extraterrestrials doing at all the military bases, nuclear military bases on the planet. They were turning those things off. They were melting circuit boards. They were telling every military that had a nuke, you are not going to use it because it affects us. It doesn't just hurt you. It creates a wave dimensionally because you're ripping holes in time. Yeah. They're not going to let us use them. You know, they're just not going to let it happen. 
but you know, there's plenty of other shit we could use, like bioweapons and anthrax and all this other crap that they were building and and making, you know, for God knows why. Um, you know, that they could do something stupid with. But, you know, that's why we have all these boots on the ground, Michael, is to make sure that doesn't happen. Because not only do you have Starseed, but you also have physical represent, re representatives of other star nations here living amongst us. Yeah. You know, I, you know, we're still in the vaudeville part of the show here. You know, the stupidity. You know, and, and and those of us who have been awake a while, you know, we're like really done with this, with the vaudeville show, you know, you know, let, let's get real serious now of, about, you know, taking humanity to the next level. It's just, Christ, it's so frustrating. <laughs> oh my God. Mm -hmm. Frustrating is the word. Yeah. You know, so, uh did you want to elaborate at all, Elena, on this idea that what we're witnessing now is is just a show? I mean, that it's it's got to be scary because that's what's going to have to, that's what's needed to wake up the normies. Is this similar to the information you've received? Well, the information I receive is that uh, people need to get up and just stand up for themselves and and just get rid of the all those the deep state people in power and just stand up and the the way the best way to do it is to stop consenting to to do what they tell you to do stop uh accepting their fear information everything that's fear based it comes from the bad side you know and you know this 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 conflict with uh regressive extraterrestrials the orion group the reptilians blah 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 you know the the galactic federation and the the alliance they are in they could have just just sort this everything out in one hour <laughs> they didn't first because uh they didn't want to transform the earth in a battlefield and kill everyone but second and that's uh, in fact the first it's the most important humanity needs to wake up and shift to the next level of consciousness they need, need to do that and uh they humanity has been in an abusive relationship with the narcissistic uh deep state and nobody can take us out of it we need to just wake up ourselves and sometimes when you're in an abusive relationship with a partner whatever it is whatever level you need if you don't realize and you don't have the courage to get out you need to take hits until you you say you're fed up and you just go that that's enough now enough and you just stop consenting to be abused and you move on and you just you take away actually you don't need to kill your abuser you need just to take the power away from them that's all you need to do stop feeding them stop saying yes you say bye you ignore them you take the power away and they just wither that's what we need to do and humans have started to stand up all over the world and it's great and uh, finally it's happening but the thing is we we need to stop waiting they, they've they've groomed us in waiting for something or someone to save us or to do the job for us uh, for us and no it's humans need to save humans you know um that's what i'm told but it's happening mm -hmm. so both of you have expressed a lot of optimism that uh, as this year plays out that we're going to have many positive things happening so do you still feel that way about 2022 and beyond maybe we can start with alex and finish with elena well, definitely definitely you know there's there's no shit show lasts forever you know and no storm lasts forever either either at some point it passes and the sun comes back out you know i mean that's just the nature of of what is and um yeah it, 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 you know that we're 
three years from now, we're going to look back at this moment and we're going to be like, wow, what was that all about? You know, why did we buy so buy into it? Because we're going to have a very clear perspective, you know, just a couple years down the road about everything that was going on here, how we were being played, how we were being lied to, how we were being manipulated. And once everybody sees that, or a majority of people see that, it's over. It's, it's done. They can never do that again. And, you know, Michael, as far as the normies, I'm not sure that any more normies are going to wake up. I think those who are awake are awake already. Those that can be awake and will be awake, they're already awake. I think the small percentage of people who just won't get it, they're never going to get it. And I think we're there. I do. I, I think they know. Um, but, you know, this was part of the plan. This was part of the rollout. And they can't change course because they've laid this thing out the way it's supposed to play in order to achieve a very specific ending. So they have to do this anyway. They can't just say, okay, you know what, let's support this. It's too late for that. They have to play this thing out. And what it's going to do is those who are awake, it's going to make us much more resolute in the idea of being um, self-reliant, self-responsible, and never giving our power away to a corporate or governmental structure ever again. And what this will do is it, it will make us resolve all of humanity that any structure we build to service us, we will in fact control. They will not control us. It's never gonna happen again. And, uh, you know, I, I for one, I'm ready to let's, let's, let's move on now. You know, let, let's get to the end here. Well, uh, that brings me to the end. Uh, so Elena, uh, where do people find out about what you're doing? I mean, upcoming books or books that you have available. And if they want to get in touch with you, where, where do people go? Thank you, Michael. Um, first, I, I would like to uh, to say that I'm feeling very optimistic for the future. I've been shown a future where everyone is federated in a civilized society on Earth. And all these new technologies are everywhere. So I've seen that it's very close. Um, I've been told that July, something may happen that can change the vision humans have about their own presence in the universe and in their history. So let's wait and see what this will be. Maybe disclosure, I don't know. Um, I feel very positive. I believe, I trust in human race and, you know, my friends upstairs, they said to me once, if we thought there was no hope, we wouldn't be here. So that's, that's all. Um, now where to find me? Um, well, uh, elenadanan.org, you have everything I do on it. Uh, my website, my books, or everything is centralized there. And my YouTube channel, Elena Danan, where I have all my uh, free videos and uh, workshops and everything. Thank you. So Alex, uh, what about you uh, in terms of your, I know you're doing uh, regular webinars and uh, people can contact you for uh, Q and A. So how do people do that? Well, I, we do three, we do two webinars and a Q and A every month. Um, I haven't restarted the one-on-ones yet. Um, so that's on hold, uh, but alexcollier.org um, you know, there's a body of work that's out there scattered throughout the internet um, that hasn't been fully taken down yet. Um, so there's there's all, all kinds of places and um, you know that's that's pretty much it. You know, and and trying to support others who are not only in this field but you know those who are. The, you know, contactees and such that are 
you know, putting their toe in the water to see what it's like. Um, you know, they'll be happy to know that it's not like it was 30 years ago. <laughs> you know, it, the people are much more open at this point. And um, it's a lot easier to have these types of conversations. Um, so, you know, it's that and, and it's both Elena and I supporting you in your work and you know, why don't you tell people, Michael, how they can find out about more about your work? <laughs> yes, well, uh, people can just visit my website, exapolitics.org. That's my central hub, and I put uh, everything on there. And I also have um, another website I just created, exopoliticstoday.com, where people can get my podcasts and they can watch this. Maybe they're watching this now. So I want to thank you both, Alex and Elena, for for really giving us so much wisdom, so much guidance. I know this is a, a difficult time for many. Uh, they're looking for hope. They're looking for guidance. And both of you have that in abundance. So it's really an honor to know both of you and to be working with you. So thank you and aloha. Thank you, Michael. And thank my you. best to Angelica. You have been listening to ExoPolitics Today with Dr. Michael Solomon. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Join or start a conversation in the comments. Take the time to explore the vast library of best-selling books, webinars, and podcasts by Dr. Solomon. Visit exopoliticstoday.com.